All right, now for the last bit on wave optics. Um, I was going to talk about, we're going to talk about polarization. If you imagine you had a rope, you're take, shaking up and down, sending a wave down the rope, and it was going through a vertical slit, the wave would pass right through and keep on going. But if it goes through a, a slit and the wave is going horizontal and the, the slit's vertical, then the slit is going to bring the wave to an end. It's just simply not going to go through. Well, in polarization of light, the same thing basically happens. If you have light that's polarized all kinds of directions, you can put a polarizing filter in place with an axis lined up like this, and just the component that is in that direction gets through. And if you think of it in terms of, well, it's lined up at some angle, the electric field is lined up at some angle theta with the vertical, what gets through is just E cosine theta, right? E cosine theta. The result is that the intensity on the other side depends on cosine squared theta. You gotta remember intensity goes as um, electric field squared, so the intensity after the uh, polarizer goes as cosine squared theta. So how do polarizers work? Well, they're actually molecules um, lined up, long molecules lined up um, 90 degrees to the direction you want to have pass through. So basically these long molecules act like an antenna that receives and absorbs the energy, the electric field if it's lined up with them. Right? So when the electric field that's lined up with them hits there, it gets absorbed, which leaves only the component that's up, up and down to go through. That's the basics of how this works. And that gets us to um, where we are with just the vertical component on this going through. All right. So if the electric field like this, as shown here, it's what I was talking about, gets absorbed. If the electric field is like this, it goes on past. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. One last thing on polarization. It's something called Brewster's Angle. So when light comes down and reflects off of a surface, it becomes partially polarized. And the polarization direction um, in this case is for that component of the light that's in line with the surface, right? So it's the part coming out of the page here, right? Part coming out of the page here. Okay. Um, and then what goes down below is partially polarized as well. Well, Brewster's angle is the angle here, right? Theta, theta B, right there. Theta B. Brewster's angle is the angle where the reflected light, this light, is completely polarized. Right? Brewster's angle. It's completely polarized. At this point, all the light going that direction is polarized. The light coming down into the media that gets refracted is partially polarized. Um, it's this polarization effect on reflection that surfaces preferentially reflect the component that is parallel to the surface and preferentially transmit the component that is perpendicular. Well, other than parallel to the surface, I wouldn't say perpendicular, but other than parallel to the surface, right? Because of that, um, light off of reflected surfaces tends to be polarized. And this is why your sunglasses really help when you're on the water, right? Or the snow, because the light reflecting off the water and the snow is polarized. You wear polarized glasses and you cut out a lot of that reflection, making it easier to see. And that's it for our lectures on wave optics.